Hey guys, it's Leah. So let's say that you have some temperature data. That temperature data is from multiple sites collected using different sensors over time and you need to share it with one of your colleagues. Well, one option that you have is to save all that data in an Excel spreadsheet with a whole bunch of tabs or a whole bunch of CSVs and then some metadata files. And then you have to give it to your colleague and make sure that each file is described clearly and they have to sort through all the files and then start to work with them to do the processing. So that's one option, but another option is to save all of that information in one single data file. Yep, you heard me right. So that would be a hierarchical data file. And that's the beauty of hierarchical data files. They allow you to save different types of information all in the same file. And oh yeah, they're self-describing because they also contain metadata associated with all of the information within them. So let's have a look at what that file structure looks like so you can get a better sense of how you might work with these types of data in the future. I'm going to jump over here to my HDF5 viewer, which is a free viewer that you can download from the hdf5group.org website. You can just go to HDF5 and then click on this HDF view um, link or click on the downloads link and get the viewer. It's no cost. I have it here and I'm going to go ahead and open an HDF5 file that happens to have some temperature data from some of the neon towers located in Colorado and Florida. Now right away when I open this file, I see that it has an interesting structure. So I can click on the name of the file and immediately get some information about what the file is, some metadata. And that's really helpful if I wanted to bring this into R or Python. The data are self-describing, so I can bring in that metadata and look at it when I'm working with it in R, which is really awesome. So the other thing that I see here is that I've got two locations worth of information. And I happen to know that domain three is one of the eco-climatic neon domains located in the southeast. And this is the Ordway Swisher site, and I know that because I can check out the metadata that's been stored with this information in the file. I have two different types of data for Ordway. I have data that's been aggregated every minute, and I have data that's been aggregated every 30 minutes take this a step further, I see that I have the individual booms on the tower and that just translates to sensors at different heights vertically on the tower and I can even look at what that height is because it's in the metadata stored within the structure of the file. So boom 1 is pretty close to the ground, 0.4 meters, whereas boom 5 is getting up there so that's almost 25 meters off of the ground. So we've got some taller trees at this site. Now I can take this a step further and look at some actual data stored within each one of these folders. Here's some temperature data. I can double click it to open it. I can see that the data itself are self-describing and there's some information about the different columns within the data. And then we can see that we have the same structure for our second site. So this is a file. If I go to my actual directory and look for the data, all of this information is stored in this one single file. And then, yes, I can share this file with all my colleagues, all my friends, and they can work with the file as well.